Hey guys, I am Sai Teja and welcome to Proton Stock Channel. Today's topic is Parallel and Perpendicular Axis Theorems. So I am sure that if you have studied rotational motion at any point of time, you would be know knowing about moment of inertia. And these two theorems make the calculation of this moment of inertia very very easy. Okay, very very easy. So, uh, for the people who don't know about moment of inertia, let's give them a quick understanding. So basically, moment of inertia is denoted by I and moment of inertia is equivalent to mass in rotational motion. Okay, let me simplify it further. So intuitively, if mass of an object increases, you know that uh, the force required or the difficulty to move it is more. So as mass increases, the difficulty to move it is also, also increases. On the same lines, if moment of inertia increases, the difficulty to rotate an object also increases. So I hope you understood the equivalence here, equivalence relation between mass and you know, moment of inertia and rotational motion. So that was a simple idea. We will probably cover this uh, moment of inertia concept in detail in another video. Let me tell you an interesting fact about moment of inertia here. So the moment of inertia of an object uh, doesn't depend only on the object itself. It also depends on the axis of rotation. So if you take a disc like this, the moment of inertia about this axis is different from the moment of inertia about this axis. Right. So it's like different. Uh, so there are a lot of axes, right? lot of axes here and moment of inertia about all these axes are different. So let's see how do you calculate the moment of inertia. Basically this is the formula to calculate moment of inertia where here r is equal to distance of a point from the axis of rotation and dm is a small mass. Right. So let me uh, show you with the rod here. So if you take a rod and if you consider this is the axis of rotation and uh, you, you will have to take some dm, some small dm and this will be your r. With the, so that is how you calculate moment of inertia basically and let me tell you that there are number of like infinite axis here like there are uh, infinite axis here and uh, you can already like observe that these calculations are not going to be too easy i'll if you want i'll link some uh, derivation in the description and you can check how long they are right so if you uh, if you so just to calculate the moment of inertia about this one axis it's too difficult so how are you going to calculate about all the infinite axis so here comes our two theorems, the parallel and perpendicular axis theorem, right? What they does is they make these calculations really, really easy. So let's get into these two theorems and see how do they make it easy. So first let's start with parallel axis theorems. Let's go with the definition first and we'll understand it later, right? So let the moment of inertia about the center of mass b i. The moment of inertia about another axis parallel to this axis is simply the sum of i and m d square where d is the distance between the axis and m is the mass of the object. Didn't understand that? Let's understand with an example. So let's take the rod again uh, here and let's say this is the center of mass and uh, this is an axis passing through center of mass. Let's say moment of inertia about this axis is I and let's take another axis passing through the end of the rod and let's say the moment of inertia across uh, about this axis is I dash and let's say the distance between these two is D and let's say the mass is M. So parallel axis theorem says that I dash is equal to I plus M D square. So basically the moment of inertia about the axis through center of mass plus the mass into square of the distance between the axis. It's pretty simple, right? 
there is nothing much the axis the theorem itself sounds a bit uh, afraiding uh, frightening but it's not like that it's pretty easy i hope you understood that right so quickly let's move to the next theorem perpendicular axis theorem so first let's go through the definition and we'll understand with an example again so it says that let the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the planar surface be iz let's take a planar surface planar square surface probably and it says that uh, axis perpendicular to the planar surface so this is the axis perpendicular to the planar surface let the moment of inertia be iz after that it says that ix and iy be the moments of inertia about two mutually perpendicular axes in the plane and it also says that two axes should intersect where the first axis cuts the plane right so let's say these are the two axes and they are mutually perpendicular and they are inter and all the three are intersecting let's say the moment of inertia about this axis is ix and about this axis it's iy then according to perpendicular axis theorem it says that iz is equal to ix plus iy so basically moment of inertia about a perpendicular axis is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of mutually perpendicular axis which are in the plane right and that is also pretty simple it's just this simple you know so i hope you understood this as well let's move on to the next top next uh, thing in the video it's the applications so as you might be realize as you might have realized by now that uh, um, moment of this uh, these two uh, theorems eases the calculation of moment of inertia so that is the main application of these two theorems there is nothing much more than this so after the applications i would like to show you just two small examples so that you understand how uh, these two theorems make it easy let's these let's see this question it says that the moment of inertia of a thin uniform rod of mass m and length l about an axis perpendicular to the rod passing through its center is ml square by 12 so it asks the moment of inertia of the rod about an axis perpendicular to the rod passing through its endpoint let me explain you the problem uh, if you see this is a rod and this is center uh, axis passing through it the moment of inertia about this axis is ml square by 12 and the question asks to find the distance uh, the moment of inertia about this axis which passes through the end point so as we know that the length is l and mass is m so obviously this length would be l by 2 because it's half of the distance so according to parallel axis theorem i dash is equal to i plus m d square so here we know that i is equal to ml square by 12 right let me put it here and this small m is capital m here mass of the rod and d is l by 2 here as we have discussed let me put that as well l by 2 whole square this would become ml square by 12 plus ml square by 4 which would be ml square by 3 so it's that easy you know it's just three steps here and you have got the moment of inertia about this axis which is ml square by 3 so it's that simple right let's go to the second question which is an application of perpendicular axis theorem let's see the question here the moment of inertia of a rectangular plate about an axis parallel to its length and passing through its center is half ml square and about an axis parallel to its width here it was parallel to its length and here it was parallel to its width passing through its center is half m uh, 1 by 2 l m w square so what is the moment of inertia about the plate about an axis perpendicular to the sheet passing through its center let's understand the problem it says that there is a rectangular plate and uh, there are two axes one parallel to its length and one parallel to its width so you can uh, see that this is a 90 degree these are mutually perpendicular 
and uh, this uh, axis the uh, in the moment of inertia is ml uh, square by 12 and here it is mw square by 12 where l is the length and w is the width of the rectangular sheet now the question asks the moment of inertia about this axis a perpendicular axis to the sheet this let it be iz so as we know from perpendicular axis theorem iz is equal to ix plus iy so ix and iy can be anything if we take this as ix and this is iy iz would be equal to ml square by 12 plus mw square by 12 which would be m by 12 into l square plus w square right so it is that said it's just uh, three steps again and you have the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the rectangular plate so it's that simple right it's just three steps problem in these uh, related to these theorems so those were two uh, simple examples of these two theorems i hope you understood things and i hope you got to learn things and get a clarity about these two theorems if you did just give a thumbs up share the video and give your valuable comments in the comment section i'll see you in the next video with a new concept thank you